I'm going to give you a quick tour and demo of the new Payable Forms Google Form add-on. It's now available in the Google Workspace Marketplace. If you're a user of Google Forms, you probably already know how easy and effective it is as a free tool to create any type of online t-shirt sign-up form, order form, event registration, any type of internet-based data collection that you might have to do. You can quickly and easily go to forms.google.com and create your own form with almost no programming knowledge whatsoever. You can even customize the rules and the logic, change the logos and the colors. It really is a powerful and amazing tool. The only thing that Google Forms seems to be missing out of the box is that ability to accept payment as part of your form submission. The ability to add dollar values or money values to the different options that a user could select, automatically calculate a total, and then ask your user to submit payment. That is exactly what the Payable Forms add-on does. It allows your Google Forms to accept and request money for you automatically. The other thing that it'll do is update the linked Google Sheet with the payment status so you don't need to keep track of anything. Sounds too good to be true? Let me give you a quick demo. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to create a brand new form and this one's going to be my dog walking request form. And the description is just, this is a sample for dog walking. Okay, perfect. And let's fix that. Okay, generally the ease of this is um, to work just like you usually would. So if you were making a dog walking request form, some information that you might want to know about the dog might be uh, the dog's name. What is your dog's name? And it could be a short answer question. And then what is the date that you want uh, the walk? And that could be a date field, perfect. And the third option would be what walk package would you like? Okay, so this is where the payable forms add-on can automatically take the values that you write and turn them into a checkout. So let's call it a short walk for only, uh, let's make it $10 and a long walk for $20 and let's add another option called the 10 pack of long walks and we're going to give them a bit of deal of a deal here so it'll be $150. Okay, seems like a pretty straightforward easy form. The other thing you can do is customize the look and feel of your form and this is all just normal Google stuff uh, that is available inside Google Forms. This looks like some walking so let's insert that as our header image and then Google automatically kind of uses the colors, which is nice. So let's set those colors. And uh, that's a nice dog walking request form. Looks uh, pretty good and easy. So to get to add-ons, what you need to do is click here, the little ellipsis, and you're going to go down to add-ons. And when you click on add-ons, you are going to search for payable, payable forms. So payable forms because what you want to do is make your form accept money. And there it is, so we're going to install this add-on. It'll ask you for several permissions, and these permissions allow us to listen to form submissions and update the attached sheet, and also send emails to your customers with a link to the checkout if they didn't, and receipts if they didn't get to the checkout right away. And we'll show you how this all works. So I'm going to agree to these permissions, and it will install. You can see here it's just going through the installing flow. And it is now going to welcome you. As you go through the welcome throw flow here, um, the most important thing is that you just ch double check to make sure all of your language, your home country, and your currency are correct. What this does is it allows us to understand how you might format your currency. If you're in uh, using euros or GBP, you would be using different currency styles and possibly with different languages, your decimal uh, separator might be, a, or your thousand separator might be different. Uh, so this is important that you just make sure is set correctly and you would go on to the video and we can close that since you have me. So we can now close this window and you can see here on the right hand side, the payable forms uh, section has popped open. If you're ever missing it, you can get back to your add-ons by clicking up here on the puzzle piece. So if you want to use this 
uh, add-on again on a different form. You don't need to reinstall it. All you have to do is go to the add-on and go to payable forms. So you can see here that it's open. And uh, what we're going to do is go through some of the getting started steps to install it. I'm going to hit the first button, which is Auto Configure Form and Sheet. And what this does is several things. You'll see in a second as it pops up once it finishes up. Okay, so what this did is it uh, added an email address input. So when you create a payable form, it will require an email address. This is so we can send the user, the form submitter, uh, a receipt and also send them a checkout link if they don't click on it right away. The other thing we do is we set change the confirmation message on your form and we add a unique checkout link to it. You'll see that in the demo in just a second. And the other thing we do is we set the destination for the responses to go to a linked Google Sheet. And so uh, if you don't know, that's a, one of the options of Google Forms. Instead of just looking at the responses inside of Google Forms, you can send them automatically to a Google Sheet. And so if you click this See Connected Google Sheet button, it'll open up the Google Sheet that we have modified. So you can see at the top here, the purple columns are the ones that will come in from my form. So the email address, the dog's name, and then we also have some added forms, uh, sorry, added columns that the payable forms add-on will automatically read and write to with each submission. An order ID, the total that we calculated, uh, status, and other things like that. So that all looks good, and you can just double check it uh, by clicking on that step. We don't need to add a sample payment section because we have already done that. If you want to click add sample payment section, you can add one and it'll add a, a section to your form. We can sync the theme with the checkout. So what this button does is it takes uh, any theme settings that we've set up, like our, our header image and our title and our strip description and color and fonts, and it syncs it with the checkout flow. And if you click show me a preview, it'll show you kind of a preview of how that checkout looks. So we can go, oh yeah, it does look, the dog walking request form looks very similar to our, um, our form, which, is, uh, which is, is cool. So we can close that if that looks good. If you change anything in the form, like your colors or sizes, just hit the sync theme button again, and it will uh, resync the colors in the background. The third step is to connect a payment provider. So you need to connect a payment provider in order to process payments. When you click on this button, it'll open the current payment provider options that we have. We're growing more and more payment providers every, every month or so, so do check back if you really wanna use Stripe or Square Addion. We're working on those integrations now. To get started, however, we have PayPal Standard as well as the PayPal Commerce Platform. PayPal Standard works great for any individual or business. Uh, PayPal Commerce Platform, it offers more advanced card capabilities, so the credit card could be entered right on the page. Um, the new inline card of PayPal Standard does that a little bit as well. Uh, I'll show you a demo of both in another video in the detailed PayPal video. So to get started, I'm going to enter PayPal Commerce Platform uh, and the connection link here with a business account. So I'm going to connect this with an existing pay, uh, business account that I have. And this will redirect me back after asking for some permissions. If you haven't granted permission before, it'll ask for several permissions um, let, and then return back to the payable forms page. And then you can simply close this window. And what that will do is you should see something like this where it is now connected and we have uh, a payment provider connected and down here we also have it connected. So that is perfect. So next all you have to do is click the big make this form payable button and what this will do, will will it will start automatically um, analyzing new form submissions for dollar amounts. It will email the form submitters and the next step is really to make a test transaction. So what we do now is it is still in testing mode. So we're not doing real money just yet. So it is in sandbox or test mode and we can make a test transaction to see how it all works. So let's give it a try. So now we're really just viewing the uh, form as a normal viewer as if somebody was submitting it and I'm going to put in my dog's name and the date he needs a walk, uh, 12, 24, uh, 
2011. That doesn't make any sense. 2020. And he's going to get a short walk. And I am going to hit submit. And this is where you can see we changed the uh, confirmation method message. So it says here, thanks for your submission, use the link below. And when you click on this link, it will automatically find the related submission and queue up the checkout for you. So you can see here there was a short walk and it was $10. And since this is in testing mode, we provide you with some test cards here and we have the test payment gateway set up. So uh, none of this is real, it's all just fake money. When I check my dog walking spreadsheet, you can see here that uh, a submission has already come through. As you can see uh, the dog's name, when the walk was requested for, what the walk was, and the payable order ID that was automatically generated. How much we calculated was owed, uh, and what status it was in. The email was sent, uh, has the checkout been started? Has it been paid, et cetera, et cetera. So that all looks really good. So let's do a test transaction using the test MasterCard, which is here. We can key this in and 0925371. And I'm going to hit pay with MasterCard. All right. So we'll return you to the receipt and it is fully paid. Then you'll see what happens automatically is the payable status was updated to paid. Um, the payment method is included here, which shows you that it was uh, processed by PayPal with uh, a MasterCard ending in 2187. Here's the transaction ID and uh, when it was updated to this status, when the payment date was. So pretty cool. So it automatically goes through and updates things for you. So you can keep track of who's paid, who hasn't paid, who you need to remind. And if you ever want to check out any of the link, if somebody messages says, hey, I didn't get my link, um, you can click on these links. And it will, if it's been paid, it will show you the receipt. And if it hasn't been paid, it will allow you to check out and make that payment for the specific order identifier. And generally, that is it. So that's how quick and easy it is to turn any form into a payable form. Okay, before we go, I just wanted to show you that you can add any number of dollar amounts in your questions. So whether it's a multiple choice field or a checkbox field, you can add optional amounts in any quantity that you see fit. Uh, we will automatically calculate and add up any um, item that has a dollar value associated with it that you use or selected and add it to the checkout page. So I added a new section called add-ons and there's some treats and a dog, watch, uh, dog wash, an extra item called fetch, which has no amount. You can see that it'll Google automatically adds the new add-on section as a column here, which looks good. So let's do one other test just to show you how multiple line items work. When you go to send or share your form, all you have to do is hit send and share it like usual. So you can get the link to your form if you wanted to share it with a friend or test it out. Um, let's do another dog. Uh, let's do Molly. And um, 12, 12, 2020. 20. Uh, she's gonna get a long walk with treats and fetch and submit. If you click on the checkout button too quickly, what we do is we will pause while we have time to collect the item that took a webhook and calculate, and then we will redirect the user to the checkout automatically. So you can see here, this checkout included the long walk and the treats, and the total amount due was $20. And we can now pay this one. Let's use the Discover card. 1024 and 059. All right. And now that that is paid, we should have another walk session. Let's see, we got Patrick and Molly, and the different transactions are already automatically updated as paid.
So that all looks really good. When you are ready to go live, all you have to do is scroll down in your testing mode and turn it off and set it to real money. When you set your checkout to real money, you will no longer see the, the test cards and the big yellow section. It will be live and ready for um, actual payments. So as soon as you set that to off real money, um, that is what happens there. There are some other details happening in the checkout section. If you wanted to add taxes or add a handling fee, a surcharge, some, something like that to every transaction, you can do that by changing these sliders here. But otherwise, all you need to do is turn this off and you are good to go. All right, well, best of luck, and we are glad we could make your Google Forms now a payable form.